the college coaching carousel is over. Who made the best hire? And I'm going to double it up. Who held the best coaching search? Okay, so first of all, ESPN grades the hires. Give us the ones that we care about, Caleb. So Sherrod Moore to Michigan, I think, is an interesting one. He's a B plus. Um, we don't care about Arizona. We don't care about Washington. Um, Alabama, Caitlin DeBoer to Alabama is considered an A minus. Um, Mike Elko to Texas A&M is a B plus. Um, Day's favorite head coach, Manny Diaz, is going to Duke and somehow got an A minus. That's not an A minus. Um, I don't like that. That's a good hire for Duke. I don't like Manny Diaz, but I do think a it's a great hire. hire for Duke. It's a terrible hire. Manny Diaz is not a good coach. Um, Duke's a terrible going, program. Uh, Je uh, more SEC, Jeff Levy to Mississippi State, former Hypo offensive coordinator. He uh, They got a B for that hire. Um, and moving on down, I'm trying to – no one cares about Michigan State. No one cares about Syracuse. No one cares about Oregon State. Those, that's pretty much it. I, 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 I covered the ones people care about. Maybe if you want to say people care about Michigan State, uh, they hired that Jonathan – Brown guy, I believe, from uh, Oregon State. So, um, Jonathan Smith, excuse me, um, who's going to replace Mel Tucker, who um, apparently, you know, likes to have a little fun over the phone. Okay, so Dylan says the Alabama coaching search was pure entertainment. I agree with almost everything Dylan says, but we're 180 degrees different. I thought it was incredible because they targeted who they wanted and they went out and got them. Okay, now... I don't agree with who they hired. I think the hire is a B minus. Okay. But I think the way they did it and they were concise and they had a plan. So either they've been planning on this for three or four years, because we've all known that Nick Saban's going to retire sometime or they, they moved quickly because he gave them a little bit of information. Either way, they moved quickly. They got who I think they wanted either their first or second choice. So I'm, I'm down with that one. I think, it's not a good hire. It's not a great hire. It's not an elite hire, but it was a good coaching search. So we'll have to disagree on that with some of our message board. Uh, um, I think that Michigan would have hired Kalen DeBoer in a heartbeat had he not been off the market. I think you and I are going to disagree on the Michigan job. I don't think you elevate a guy from within. I think that job is better than that, despite what he did in the one game Harbaugh was suspended. And let me address – well, I addressed, I addressed all three that I care about. Elko is the best hire. And he's going to have success at AM, in my opinion. Uh, AM ran the best search as a whole. You mean Alabama? You mean Alabama ran the best Alabama, search? Right? Alabama ran the best search as a whole. I think Michigan just messed in their Wolverine kit. Okay, here's the thing I, where I have to be fair to you with Sharon Moore is that Michigan. Okay, now this does line up with when Connor Stallion started stealing signs. So take with that what you want. Okay, but, but Michigan was a perpetual nine and four program under Jim Harbaugh, weren't they? Until 2021. 2021 was the year they promoted Sharon Moore to offensive coordinator. Just co-offensive coordinator that year, but still offensive coordinator. They've won the Big Ten every year since. They've beaten Ohio State every year since. They've gone to the yes. college football playoff every year since. Yes. Sharon Moore then filled in for Harbaugh in their biggest games of the regular season this year, Penn State and Ohio State. They won both of them. Um, This is a... This is literally... The identity, literally identical to Philip Fulmer with Johnny Majors in, in the late '80s, early '90s. Now I understand what you 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 were closer to the program than I was then. John John Adams covered the program. I understand what they say that Johnny Majors built the program, but Dave, numbers are numbers, and Tennessee didn't take an, another step until Johnny Majors made Fulmer offensive coordinator. They weren't a perpetually elite program until Fulmer was promoted to offensive coordinator, and. Then Johnny Majors is out. Fulmer wins Tennessee's two biggest games of the year. And he becomes head coach. Very, very, very similar. I don't know, Sharon. So I can't say this is a bad hire because of that. Because whatever you think of Fulmer, on paper in 1992, that was the most obvious hire of all time, wasn't it? When Tennessee hired Phil Fulmer. Uh, yeah, but okay, let's, with the more thing. Here's the one thing, if you're Michigan, you're thinking, um, you can ax this guy in three years if he doesn't get it done. Now, it used to be that would be stupid because it would destroy your roster and your recruiting base. But with NIL and with Transfer Portal, that's not really the case. So I think they thought that was the easy way out. And because Alabama popped before them, I think you had a, a lot of guys like Dan Lanning get bigger contracts that you're going to hear announced in the coming weeks. 
And you had Kalen DeBoer actually go to Alabama. So I think Michigan was a little bit stuck and painted into a corner, quite frankly. Uh, the Elko. Uh, I'm with you on the Elko hire. That's the it's best great hire. hire. It's a great hire. Great hire. I have said for years, I've said for years, if you hire Ivy League mathematicians who also have a background in football as head coach, they would be light years ahead of every other coach in intelligence. Texas A&M is running that experiment with Mike Elko. So this and is today's, I'm sorry, this is today's tough question. Go ahead and tell me who you think made the best hire in, in the offseason. Was it Elko? Was it DeBoer? Uh, who might it be? Uh, again, Caleb loves Manny Diaz or thinks that I do for some reason. But <laughs> Dave actually, loves those no. Miami coaches. He always has. Yeah. That's that's why he's a crystal uh, yeah, ball. I, do, I know. I got a little. I got a little Jimmy Johns and what he did for the Cowboys. I'm like, I never really liked Miami, but what he did for the Cowboys, I'm like, okay, I kind of like him. And his, yeah. And by the way, his three ring sports bar that was on the beach is the best sports bar you ever been to. Imagine having your wings, watching all the TVs. Upstairs was all Miami. Downstairs was all Cowboys. He won three championship rings. And then you walk outside to the beach for a while to take a little break, and you go back to your seat, and they hold it for you and your food's there. It was the best ever. But anyway, okay. So when I'm looking at the Alabama hire though, am I, am I overlooking something? And that is Papa Jay brings it up. I would hate to have Saban over my shoulder, still making decisions. Listen, I would feel a lot better about this hire. If I'm an Alabama booster, if they say, Nick, man, let's hug this thing out. You did a great job, brother. I'm going to pass you on the butt. But it's time to hit the door. I don't think you have another rooster in the hen house. And there are other – Kalen has to make his decisions, DeBoer. The athletic well, Hooker knows all to, about the hen house. Yeah. The athletic director has to make their decisions. So he doesn't need to be around. I would feel better about the hire if, if he wasn't around. But he's going to have his own office in the athletic department. And I heard an interview with Kalen DeBoer recently on Dan Patrick – I'm not sure that he's sure that he gets Saban's old coaching office because he hadn't been in it yet. And he sounded like he was a little blown away by expectations. But nevertheless, um, I would feel a lot better about that. Today's tough question, uh, we get your thoughts. Brought to you in part by our friends at Sports Treasures, carrying over 5 million Sports Treasures and so much more. Go to Facebook.com, Facebook.com. Follow at Sports Treasures TN, Sports Treasures TN. The other thing that you have to factor in is if you want to compare it to the Philip Fulmer hiring and what Michigan did with the Moore guy, is does Moore – I think that Moore was probably able to bring everyone together in a coaching transition, which isn't easy, and you'll probably retain the most amount of guys, which is less important with Transfer Portal. But is Moore a great offensive mind, or has he brought one of those assistant coaches – to the next level with him, the next level of coaching, that will be his offensive coordinator. Because Philip Fulmer had David Cutcliffe, and that thing doesn't work out with just Philip Fulmer as the OC, and or the head coach, for that matter. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And you're right. And Sharon Moore, you have to wonder what he's going to do with that and who he's going to promote. I would assume he will promote. I don't know who called the place for Michigan when he was head coach. I don't know if he was the one calling the place because Fulmer, it was – when Fulmer stepped in for majors, it was very clear that Cutcliffe was calling the plays already, wasn't it? At that yes. point, Fulmer, it, it, did Fulmer just see? You got to give Fulmer some credit. He saw David Cutcliffe. He saw David Cutcliffe before anybody else did. I think he was the one who pushed for his hiring to begin with as a position coach, wasn't he? In the eighties. Oh yeah. Well, um, I, and and you remember too, and Philip will remind you of this. You remember his first play call. Fulmer's or Cutcliffe's? Well, Fulmer's. He claims he called it. As a head coach. No, what was it? Um, it was like a it was a deep ball. Was it maybe like a maybe a was it you'd have to go back and check the year for sure, but I know it was a deep ball because he brags about it all the time. Hey, I'm not just an offensive line coach, you know, that type of thing. Um city heating and air conditioning 50 yards, 50 years, <laughs> yards, 50 yards in East Tennessee. Integrity matters. Arg. Don't trust a fly-by-night HVAC company. Tell you that you need a new unit. Went from pirate to Irish. By the way, has anybody ever wondered why Shrek was Irish? It could cost thousands or more, and nobody asking. 
Nobody asked him why he was Irish. Cameron Diaz wasn't Irish. Don't trust a fly-by-night HVAC company to tell you that you need a new unit that could cost thousands. Support our sponsor, cityheatandair.com. Integrity matters. It might just be a part. It might just be, I don't know, a slight adjustment, and then boom, you're good to go. That's City Heating and Air Conditioning, cityheatandair.com, over 50 years in East Tennessee. So, um, Caleb, I think that's the ultimate question with Sharon Moore. Is he that offensive mind, or does he have another guy underneath him that will be? That's uh, today's tough question. Yeah. I, oh, sorry. No, you're good. Uh, I don't. I wasn't saying he's the best hire. I just think the hire was fine, and I'm with you. I, I, you know, Dave and I try to disagree on things sometimes. We really do, guys. We really sometimes try to find things we want to disagree on for a better show, but we don't. We're not going to disagree on purpose. And we, I think, we both agree that. Alabama did run the best coaching search, even though I'm not so sure, so sure they made a great hire in Kalen DeBoer. You could tell they knew who they wanted. They had kind of clearly prepared for a coaching search for whenever this day was going to come. But Mike Elko, I think, is the best hire because I think Mike Elko, guys, might be the best coach in college football. And I think that Texas is I'm a- with you on that, too. I'm, I, I, like, like Caleb said, we're always genuine, which other people aren't, by the way. They'll tell you Tennessee is going to be better than they are, worse than they are, to try to get you to click a little bit more often. We don't do that. I think Elko might be the best coach in college football. I, I'm, I didn't know you were going to say that. I'm with you on that. My question for you is, from top to bottom, did the SEC coaches get better sans Saban? Oh, so, that's a big one, Dave. That's a big one, sans Saban. So, so they Alabama Saban, notwithstanding. They lose, no, they lose Saban. They pick up DeBoer. Maybe I use Sands wrong. They pick up DeBoer. They pick up Elko. Did they get better as a whole from one to what are there? 18 now? 16? Yes, because you're forget 16, because also, and this is the big one. Jeff Levy was promoted at Mississippi State. And I think Jeff Levy's a very, very good hire. He is a disciple of Lane Kiffin and Josh Heupel. And this guy, Jeff Levy knows ball. He knows offense. I think he's a good one. Here's why I think they actually may have gotten worse, though. Brent Venables brings the average down by the fact that he's going into the SEC with Oklahoma. <laughs> well, they weren't even there before. All right. I love Caleb, but he's crazy. You just lost a legendary coach. I don't care. You could have three other incredible hires. And no, no. You said San Saban. Wait, you said San Saban. No, I'm saying I, maybe I use Sands wrong. I'm to asking you, are the SEC coaches from 1 to 16 better in 2024 than no, 2023? Oh, no, no, they're worse. They're worse. They're worse. Okay. Sorry. They're absolutely worse without Nick Saban. Okay. Well, you do have you do have Elko, and you got the uh, – so you got an upgrade in A&M, and DeBoer is not chopped liver. So – That's yeah. a significant but, downgrade, though. You can't outweigh the downgrade. Yeah. And Venables, like I said, Brent Venables joining the SEC is a downgrade. And you're higher on Steve Sarkeesian than I am. I think Steve Sarkeesian's IQ is in the bottom half of SEC coaches. Well, but he was the coach last year and will be this year. So that's not a factor. Tennessee Cider Company, the original hard cider, the Smoky Mountains, use the promo code HAT. That's HAT to uh, receive some free swag with your cider order available most anywhere in the U.S. That's TNCiderCompany.com. TNCiderCompany.com. Um, no, it's not as good without Saban, but it's still pretty darn good. And I think it's the best in the nation, especially with Michigan. You, you, you losing uh, Jim Harbaugh, I think it's definitely the best coaching group in the nation among any conference. Would you agree with that? They're, they're losing. the. It's the best coaching conference you're saying? Yes. Or they're, yes. No, I think the Big Ten has better coaching than the SEC. Interesting. I think the SEC has better talent. I think the Big Ten has better coaching. Um, I think. I mean, you know, you're talking out, out, out outside of Ryan Day, but I, I think you're. I'm much higher on James Franklin than you are. I think Luke Fickle is a superb hire at Wisconsin. I think we're really underrating how good Luke Fickle is going to do there, and Matt Rule is going to ball out in Nebraska. This was his first year. He's going to do. Matt Rule and Luke, Luke Fickle are, I think, two of the best hires any school's made in a long, long time. I was thinking about going to Starkville and interviewing. Sam Webby, but I don't know if he's a good talker or not. I, d- I definitely don't want to drive uh, my Chevy to the levee, but the levee is dry. <laughs> Eagles reference? No, oh, come on. I stole it from Derek, and you're not even laughing at that? I already saw it on the message board.